Hello everyone, it is the Prophet Michael David, aka Aries, and uh, today I'm doing like a follow-up uh, Collitz conjecture video, calling it Collitz theory, um, for a few reasons. Uh, number one, you might have noticed that I seemed a little bit inebriated. You are very uh, observant. I was just happy. Um, the algorithm turned out really, really well, and so I got a a steak and some shrimp and a bottle of Super Tuscan, and I had like a whole uh, surf and turf thing yesterday after I made my video. But as always, before I post videos, I I'm, spend a, a much time pacing around and thinking about what I'm going to say to you guys. And I did that drinking wine yesterday, so that's how that happened. There's the algorithm again, and so the other reason I'm making another video today is I realized that I did not keep all of my promises in that video. Um, it was real mathy, but I didn't explain it uh, in layman's terms completely as I wanted to. So that's what I'm going to do in this video. Uh, no screenshots of math or anything. Just keep looking at the algorithm, and I'll explain like metaphorically, um, you know, the Collitz theory. Um, and why it can't go to infinity and why it always has to go back to one just from a, a logical point of view. I'll explain the game. Okay, number one, here's the OG algorithm and the reasons why I highlighted these four boxes, the those mod lines. And remember, that's what I did. I just split the number line up into the six mod lines, one mod six, two mod six, three mod six, four mod six, five mod six, six mod six. I took something linear and I turned it into an area. Um, but the reason why I only highlighted the one mod six line, the two mod six line, the four mod six and the five mod six is because that's the only mod lines that actually play the Collitz game, except for if you pick a six mod six number or a three mod six number at the very beginning. So if you don't do that, then it never uses any three mod six or six mod six numbers. You'll never ever see them ever. It'll just shuffle between the one the one mod six line and the five mod six line. The two lines that contain all the primes and all the powers of the primes keep throwing three x one onto the four mod six line. Remember, the four mod six is exactly the same as three x plus one if you only uh, use odds, which is the game. You can't 3x plus 1 evens. You always have to divide by 2. So the basketball metaphor is this. Just pretend you're like the shooting guards. There can be two of you. You can have a duality or whatever. But one shooting guard position is on the 1 mod 6 line. And one shooting guard position is on the 5 mod 6 line. Okay. And you guys are at like 1 with 1 behind you. And you're looking towards infinity. And you're shooting at the, this basket, right? Metaphorical basket, because you're trying to win the game. So just, and I'll use my duality. So to think standing underneath the basket is the four mod six line. That's like me, Michael David. That's the power forward. As soon as, when you shoot and you miss, which is most of the time, I get the rebound. And then the two mod six line, just think of that's Aries. That's like the small forward. And so here we go. You pick an odd number because you know the first thing you want to do is 3x plus 1. You can pick any odd number, which means that it has to be on the 1 mod 6 line, the 3 mod 6 line, or the 5 mod 6 line. It doesn't matter. All three of those mod 6 lines will shoot the ball onto the 4 mod 6 line. And unless you're very lucky and hit a magic number like 5, 21, 85, you win the game automatically, but they're rare. So statistically speaking, your first shot, 3x plus 1, is probably not going to end the game or begin the process that ends the game. You're going to miss. And then two separate things happen. All right, so the power forward, 4 mod 6, goes up and gets the board. 50% of the time, half of the time, he doesn't pass the ball to two mod six. He just like looks at you guys, the shooting guards, and says, move forward. This is the only time that the actual the numbers go up is when you only have one two in the number. So it goes 
directly from the four mod six line back to the one mod six or five mod six, but the, the power forward's like move up a little bit, shoot from right there. That's the only time the numbers go up. The other 50% of the time, which is random, I mean, it's pattern, but it's random because of, of the, uh, the odd numbers that it gets thrown onto. The other 50% of the time, you'll have at least more than, you'll have two twos or more. So one two is like 50% of the time, and then all the other 50% of the, or all the other probabilities up to infinity add up to the other 50%. So in that case, if there's more than one two, four mod six passes it to two mod six, it's kind of like they're dribbling down the court towards you, you know? Four mod six to two mod six, back to the four mod six, back to the two mod six, because it's still even, it still has twos in it, until it gets to that last two and it's sitting on either the two mod six or the four mod six line. And then again, it's random, it passes it to the one mod six line or the five mod six line, and then they shoot it up on the four mod six line again. So what are the magic numbers? The magic numbers are the ones that end the game automatically. That's the very end of the game. That's your win condition. So the first magic number is five because five times three plus one is 16 and 16 is one of those two to the end, 16, eight, eight, four, four, two. Uh, the next magic number is uh, 21 because 21 times three is 63 plus one is 64. Again, you can see, and not all of the two end numbers are on uh, the four, uh, uh, four mod six line. It's only half of them. And you can tell by, because you can do the division and see if it's a three X plus one number. There are some numbers you can't three X one to. Five out of six numbers, you can't. Um, so like that's why uh, four works because four minus one divided by three is one. It's a whole number, but the eight is uh, eight minus one divided by three is seven divided by three, not a whole number. So it's not on the, the four mod six line, but the next one, 16, 16 minus one is 15 divided by three is five. And that's the first magic number. So it's only half of the two n numbers that are on the four mod six line. So what are the progeny? Well, the progeny are just the uh, magic numbers with varying levels of twos attached to them. For instance, five is the first magic number, but five's first progeny is 10 because 10 divided by two equals five and then the game then goes to 16 and you win the game. And 10 is located on the four mod six line. So the progeny are also all located on the four mod six line. And the first one, it depends on, uh, it's either the first progeny is either two times uh, the magic number, like five, because 10 is the first progeny. But then after that, it's, it's the previous progeny times four, because 20 isn't a progeny, because 20 is not on the uh, four mod six line, but 40 is. Uh, 40 minus one is 39 divided by three is 13. So it goes 10, first progeny, then second generation is actually 40, and then 40 times four is 160, and then 160 times four is 640. And so the magic number five has an infinite amount of progeny that are all located on the four mod six nine. And if you don't win the game on the first shot, that's how you win the game is by hitting the progeny, not by hitting the rail. So now the next logical question you may be asking is, okay, so do, if you have the odds splitting up into the one mod six line and the three mod six line and the five mod six line, did you say that you didn't need the three? No, you don't at all. It's just, if you randomly pick an odd number and it happens to be three mod six, it throws it on the four mod six, but you never see three mod, three mod six numbers ever before. And your other question is, well, do all of those lines have progeny? No, for that, that exact reason, the one mod six lines and the five mod six lines have progeny, but the three mod six lines do not. So you will rarely, rarely ever see three mod six magic numbers um, unless you pick very specific ones. Like you won't see 21 at all. But a lot of you will be like, wait a minute, I, I've seen Kaltz conjectures with like 21. I know I've seen it before. It's cultural bias. It's because you're, you're picking the number 42 because of a Hitchhiker's Guide and a bunch of other stuff about 42. Half of 42 is 21, which is a magic number, and then it throws it up to 64. But statistically speaking, 
21 doesn't have any progeny on the four mod six line. So unless you pick 21 or you pick one of its progeny, which is actually located on the six mod six line, uh, you'll never see 21 ever or any other magic number that's located on the three mod six line. I'll use the algo just to make this point with the three mod six and why that the Collett's theory conjecture, whatever you want to call it right now, um, only uses two thirds of all the numbers, two thirds of all the odds, and two thirds of all the evens. It doesn't use all the numbers. It only uses two thirds. Once it gets going, aside from the very specific starting position, and that I meant, if you pick a three mod six line, that's odd. Like I said, it throws it on the four mod six, and then the game have, all happens over here. And you never see three mod six ever again, because it can only go one way. Same thing with the six mod six. If it has a bunch of evens, it'll just loop in six mod six until it runs out of twos. Then it'll go up to the three mod six line and then it'll go to the four mod six. And therefore you'll never see any three mod six or six mod six numbers ever again until the game ends. Now you may be asking, so how do you know it doesn't go to infinity or whatever at any time? And it's because it can't. The one mod six and the five mod six lines uh, basically create a infinite amount of copies of their progeny that all are located on the four mod six line. And since as soon as the, the four mod six or two mod six runs out of twos and give the ball back to the one mod six or the five mod six, and they shoot it right back up three X plus one on the four mod six, eventually, <laughs> they're going to hit a progeny. There are an infinite amount of them. And as you go higher, you have more and more progeny of more and more magic numbers. And you only have to hit one, and it'll slide all the way down to that magic number, no matter how big the magic number is. And then the magic number will throw it back on the four mod, three X plus one, throw it back on the four mod six line, and it will hit the rail, the two to the end numbers. And that'll go all the way down to one, and then it'll get caught in the one, two, four loop. This also explains why, if you guys have ever wondered why a lot of them, because it's also called the, the hailstorm conjecture. I guess I'll do it like for you guys. In most of the, you know, when they just show the, the numbers, it goes, looks super random and it can go really, really high, but then it comes down, <laughs> it goes down, right? And then goes back up and then goes down and the game ends. It always seems like there's a double hump in, in the, all the, the collets um, diagrams when they do it that way, just with the raw numbers. And now you can, you can see why. You almost never hit the magic number um, on your first guess, if you guess an odd, and you never hit the rail because no one's going to guess you know the two end numbers because the game just ends without any 3x plus ones. But you have that double hump because it gets all the way to the top and then it gets three X plus one onto a progeny, goes all the way down till it hits the magic number, three X plus one, all the way back up to the rail and then down. That's why you always have a double hump. Unless you win the game on the first guess, the game is always gonna end by hitting a progeny, going down to a magic number, going back up to the rail and then going back down to one every single time. In conclusion, like I think I said in my last video, the Collett's conjecture can no more go to infinity than it can get off this page. Every number up to infinity has a mod six, uh, a mod six line that it sits on. And as my algorithm shows, the numbers are absolutely meaningless. It can be any number and everything. It's just the Collett's conjecture theory is just how the mod lines feed each other, or at least the four, the count in the college search. Again, it's only the one mod six, the two mod six, the four mod six, and the five mod six. Unless you pick them right off the bat, the three mod six and six mod six uh, lines do not contribute to the game whatsoever. So that's one, if you guys wanna double check my mastery of the subject, just don't count the three mod six and six mod six and just make sure you pick a, a uh, your first guess is on the other four and you'll never see any three mod six or six mod six numbers. The other thing you can do is just do it double blind. You can, uh, programmers and stuff, just do it double blind. Have the computer randomly generate a number and then just have it so that it like, 
you know, lights up a box that just says, and you can go back and forth until the game ends at one or gets caught in a loop. And then after that, look into it and you can see that, yeah, it followed the game perfectly. It went from all the only mods that can go to the only mods that it can go to over and over perpetually. So you can actually see the visualization of the game without even knowing what the numbers are. All right, I'm over 12 minutes a bit, so I'm gonna sign off here. Uh, let me just say, um, Colt's Conjecture, like I said, it's a simple game. The algorithm is very simple, and the more you stare at it, the more it makes sense. But obviously, sometimes the intricacies of the way the game works that I obviously know are a little bit harder to explain. Um, some days I'm more articulate than others, I guess. But uh, uh, like I said, use the algorithm and like it'll, it'll always follow the pattern. It has to. It's math. Oh, one last thing. I hope you watched that Bob Ross thing. That guy's a legend. Um, he was like, uh, I think it's called ASMR before ASMR uh, actually existed. So um, as always, uh, rule number one, do not touch another person without their consent, aka do not hurt each other. And rule number two, it's all about honesty, lies are ticked down, aka try not to lie. All right, I'll talk to you guys later.